Hi everybody and welcome to the Hedgehog Workshop. Today we are making the hedgehog from the kit from the Crafty Kit Company. So just to tell you a little bit about the format of the video. Um, first of all, it's informal. Um, we tried to make it as much like a felt along um, as possible. Um, some of the areas where um, I'm just felting away for a long time, I speed it up a bit. And of course, you're very welcome to speed up the video at any of the stages. Um, I was just trying to make it not um, too long. Okay, um, if you have any questions at all as we go along, um, if you just pop the question um, below this video in my YouTube channel, which is the Tutik channel, or if you go on to my Facebook group, Tutik's Tips and Tutorials, um, you need to just join the group um, and ask a question in there and I'll come and answer as soon as possible. If possible, the best way, as always, um, in any instructional video, video even. Gosh, I can't put, can't speak, I need to put my teeth back in. Um, obviously the best thing to do would be to watch it all the way through and then go back and felt along. Now, I realise that um, the video is probably a bit long for that, but if you have the facility to speed it up, that might be a way of doing it. Or if you just want to get on then that's fine too. And I follow the instruction sheet that you will actually have in with the kit. So you'll have that for reference too, but hopefully I'll give you some more um, tips along the way of how to get to those different stages, just giving you the confidence to um, get on with the um, kit and perhaps for other kits afterwards. Okay, so I think um, we need to get on just to let you know, we're gonna go to the overhead camera um, where we will shoot the rest of the video and then I'll come back at the end. So here we are um, at the desk with all our contents, all our lovely goodies from the kit. So let's just briefly go through. We have our core wall, which is the white wall, and we have our light brown and we have our dark brown, almost charcoal with a bit of brown. Um, we've got our wonderful mohair hedgehog fabric, which um, as mentioned in the instructions, try not to handle the top too much. I mean, it does actually have um, a latex coating on it to make those spikes. But if you keep brushing it or handling it, it will eventually get much softer. So, um, the less you handle that, the better. Um, at this stage, it's just nice to note um, that very distinctly the um, spikes are going in a particular direction. So when it comes to cutting the fabric for the hedgehog back, I'm going to think, do I want my spikes going down the back or do I want my spikes going up towards the head and um, I will make that decision when I get there. You might want to think about it or have a look at some hedgehogs and think that you want to, which one you want to actually mimic. Let's put that down. Okay, we also have our needle and thread which obviously goes with the fabric because we need to actually sew the fabric on. We have our three felting needles and we have our eyes. Plus, of course, we have our little foam mat to protect our tabletop while we're stabbing. Excellent. So let's move our mohair over to the back. And I'm also going to move 
my browns over there anything else that we need okay i'm also going to pop my little eyes in there because we don't want to lose those keep those over there so is there anything else that we need so we do need a pair of scissors for cutting out the fabric i would say to you um, if you have a sharp pair of small scissors they are the best for cutting out mohair if we want to lose as few spikes as we can i will show you the action that we do to do that if you've got a pair of embroidery scissors or just a tiny pair of scissors they will be perfect if not if you've only got bigger scissors that's fine but we'll just do the cutting just at the tip okay put those there um, i often have a ruler just because it's nice to be able to compare things it's just an easier way for me um, it might be for you uh, it's also easier for me to tell you how big my pieces are so that when I'm trying to get that information across I think that just kind of helps let me just see I think that very slightly that is adjust that yeah that's slightly straighter in case that was annoying you okay so the first thing we are going to do is we've got our three needles now one thing that we always suggest is you actually put the two needles together so that they can actually be used together and make the stabbing much faster when we get onto the um, large pieces just makes it double quick basically now if you've felted before or you happen to have a needle holder which holds a couple of needles perfect put it in there if you don't this is just as good now I have got a little piece of tape here but you can use a plaster you can use masking tape anything at all and what I do is I get my little heads to hug and then just tape them together at the top Make sure I'm showing you that. There we go. Round and round. Is that going to hold it? I think so. I think that's pretty good. If not, I've got another piece. Okay, let me just pop that in there and pop that one in there because I just want to very briefly um, say something about the stabbing motion and using the needles. I was looking through um, some of the comments um, regarding beginners using kits and I think the most frequent um, comment which comes up is about the actual stabbing action and about the fact that they may have broken a needle. So if I tell you that um, I can't actually remember the last time I broke a needle um, just to signify to you that it is all about the action okay it's very possible for you to just use one needle through a project in this case obviously we've got the three because we want to do some double stabbing let me show you um, the action of the stabbing which will avoid breaking a needle okay so in its most basic form felting is I'm going to do it, for, although I, it's actually from top down, up, down, up. I'm going to show you from the side so that you can see it better. Okay, so it is in, out, in, out. What I'm not doing is going in, moving it at an angle and then bringing it out. And let me show you that from the top. What I'm not doing is going in, moving it and then pulling it out. That will break the needle. We all think wool's nice and soft. Well, just jiggle it about in there and then you end up with a broken needle. You will be amazed at um, how tight and how hard that wool will get in the middle. So you can go in an angle. Um, and in fact, for certain techniques, we have to go in at an angle. But when we do, we go in at an angle and come out at that exact same angle. So let me just show you. We would go in an angle, out, in, out. It's always in and out in exactly the same angle, okay? In, out. And when we're using the two, especially really, because obviously we get more resistance when we've got two. 
So we make sure in, out, in, out, on top, in, out, in, out, okay? So there isn't any reason to have um, broken needles. Now, let's get on to the actual stabbing. Marvellous. Okay, so you will probably notice that my little needle holder is a pumpkin. In fact, it's a needle felted pumpkin. So I'm going to put my two needles there and my one needle there. So that's the hand. Pin cushion, anything like that will do. Um, only because I don't want to put it in my mat here because I'd like to keep that nice and free for me to do my felting. Okay, so now we're going to divide our wool up ready for the whole project. Okay, so let's take hold of our core wool. Firstly, it's in a nice long slither. So I'm going to fold that in half so that I've, and then I'm going to fold it in half again. Okay, so that I've got four. Okay, now probably need you to do it in thirds because I'm going to have two thirds, aren't I? Okay, so let's do that again. Let's get our, this isn't an exact science as you can probably gather as I'm doing a little bit of, there we go, there we go. Right, I've got, I've got my two thirds now. So let me say that the top two thirds are going to be for my body. And this is where I want to split it. Um, so we don't pull here and we don't cut with scissors. Okay, and the reason you can't pull from here is because the staple length, um, in other words, the actual length of each fiber is longer than that. So I'm actually, I'm essentially grabbing hold of two bits of ends of the same wall and they won't pull apart. So what I need to do is to bring my hand equal distances left and right, so that when I pull, the fibers ends will then pull apart nice and easily. There we go, lovely. So I'm going to put that one third over here, ready for using for my um, nose and feet and lots of lovely things like that. Okay. Okay, so in terms of making our body for our hedgehog, we're going to make an egg shape. If we look at um, picture number one, we can see uh, roughly the size that it needs to be within the hands on the photo there. So let me have a brief look at my hand. So my hand is, so we're talking about eight centimeters. I'm talking about from there to there. We're talking about eight, nine centimetres, something like that. Okay, that sounds like a good guesstimate. So to get us started, rather than, there are several ways you can do it. Um, and obviously, if you've felt it before, you may have your own way of doing it. I'm going to show you my way of doing it. So I'm going to start off with half the wall. So I'm just as you saw there, pulled apart like we did before. And I am going to create a piece that I can basically knot. There we go. Tie a knot in the center and then tie another knot to create a nice core. This is what we want to do. And I'm going to keep tying that until I've used up and keep pulling it. You see how I've got a nice, lovely, getting nice and plump in the middle there. I think I can tie it one more time. I sometimes find it easier to do this like lots of little ones in the middle because I get a tighter a tighter knot. Okay, so I've got my two little bits left over. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to take my double, my double needle, and I'm just going to stab that loose bit into my little knot. 
and as I said earlier make sure we're up and down up and down and we're not putting the needle in and pulling it out at a different angle so if you want to just go gently to start with okay you can hear that crunch love that crunch in sound just gently this is kind of like the tacking process as I call it initially just tacking that piece on um, and then I've got my other loose bit which I'm just going to bring round I don't mind about the shape at the moment because I've got my other half of wool that I'm going to wrap around and help make the egg shape. Here we go. Let's just do a nice bit. As you can probably feel, a nice bit of resistance as you're stabbing into your knot. Which just gives us a really nice core in the middle of our hedgehog. Because really, because we need to sew the mohair into our hedgehog, we need to get it a certain amount of solid, shall we say, to our shape, so that it's nice and easy to sew into. You see where if I've got a soft bit, I just push it down and then stab it in. There we go. You also may notice that I don't lift my needles way out. It's one of the reasons I think people stab themselves to start with is because we really think we need to do this action. Well, we don't. We can just stay down nice. And if you see, I, I rarely pick it out further than, in fact, I often just bring it out to the edge. Let's hope I don't now stab myself to prove myself wrong. I have stabbed myself on film before now. Too busy trying to show what I was doing rather than looking what I was doing. If that makes sense. Okay. Just stabbing it in. Okay. Till I've got. A nice a nice little core I'm not as I say I'm not really worried about how eggy shapey it is as long as it's not a big long oblong because we will work on that there we go excellent sometimes I prefer to just work with one needle rather than two needles let me just Okay, so sometimes I prefer to just stab her along with one needle because um, at least then I've got my eye on that particular needle rather than wondering where two of them are. But at the end of the day, it's faster if you're using two. I mean, simple mathematics really, two needles rather than one is going to be faster. Okay, so let's now take, um, let's pull that in half I think and should I do it in half again I do like to build up layers once I've got my core I quite like just wrapping around okay there we go a nice little wrap I'm gonna get my two needles and then just stab that in Now you don't have to stab fast. I have been told that when I stab my core wall, I do do it fairly fast. You do not have to do it fast. You can just do it nice and specific like that. As fast as you want to go. I suppose it's like anything really, isn't it? Once you feel more confident doing something, you often get faster. But don't you worry 
about your speed. It's not a race. I actually find it really quite an enjoyable um, action, stabbing. And I personally love the sound of that crunch as it goes into the wall. Just going over the end. You see, what I'm doing is I'm always, I'm turning my little shape. I'm now having a view to the fact that, just take that way so you can see, that I have to do a kind of egg shape. So it, I'm going slightly longer. Um, just by extending out the wall that I'm adding on the end. does it as I say take your time just make sure you're happy with how much I always think that when you very first start it seems to take ages for the actual felting to take place it was one of the things that when I was teaching my granddaughter how to felt she said it was the for her she loved the making of the items but it was the getting that felting going to start with that she found quite um, frustrating and she felt haha she felt that it took longer um, and she thought it should so I suppose that's the thing isn't it? it's all about expectations um, the more you stab the tighter that felting will be. Okay, there we go. Still squidgy, but bearing in mind when this is why I like adding layers um, and building it up rather than just creating a huge shape and stabbing it, because I always feel like oh, got a little one of the little spikes jumped on board there, getting in far too early. Um, yeah, I feel like because when you add every layer, you're stabbing. So rather than seems like you're stabbing into an endless mass, I always feel like the adding of fiber and stabbing into it feels far more um, satisfying, really. So we are now going to add another. So as I say, I start with the ribbon of wool up that end, and then I wrap around and finish it off at this end so that I'm always slightly extending the end but not by much and then I do my initial tack down down a line tack it down so it's not going to uncurl and then I can turn it over and carry on stabbing because we've got that nice knot in the middle that gives it a nice big um, core which means we don't have to do that massive stab to start with to get that solid. We are just stabbing into that. Oh, I do like a bit of vegetable matter today, don't I? There we go. But as I say, I am, you might see me angling my needles, but I am still going in and out at the same angle. always at the same angle. Okay, as I keep turning it round, keep turning it round. Now one thing that um, is a good idea is to um, have a look at pictures of hedgehogs because when we get to the next stage once we've made our body um, we're going to add the nose and the picture on our kit here obviously has a very pert little nose going up which is very cute um, 
and also with regards to the legs and you know he's obviously sitting down now if you look at pictures of hedgehogs you'll see that some of them their noses are to the ground and some of them they're up on their front legs you know their little front legs up as they're having a look around you might want to decide how you want yours posed today i'm going to um, replicate the kit but i will do some other variations and hopefully put them on the end of the video to show you how they look too now it's always i always say that actually the best thing to do is to watch the video all the way through and then come back and do it yourself now i know the the video is quite long and that might feel like oh you know just want to get going but you might want to run it through at, oh, I don't know, really four times as fast or six times as fast just to see um, the process and see the end results. And that might just help or even just go straight to the end, to see the end results and decide um, what you're going to do with yours. There we go. I try not to make some big announcement halfway through which if you'd known at the start would have been a big help because if I do figure something out halfway through I'll put a graphic over the front so that you have the benefit of my hindsight which is the whole point isn't it of the video of me showing you I, I like to think of it as a, more of a felt along than a complete instructional rather than me just saying do it like this do it like that um, I think it's much better if you perhaps someone shows you how they do it and you can um, initially perhaps copy that way then find your own way that's a perfect way of learning Okay, let's have a little look here. Still, I'm tighter down that end than I am at that end, so I'm just going to concentrate a little bit of stabbing up this end. So let's have a, that's, you know, once again, I can, it's still a bit squishy, but I can feel that core, which is lovely. So am I, I'm going to take that in half again and just run it round again. I suppose really I should check to see what size it is against my hand to see how much more stabbing I need to do because the more um, we stab it the smaller it gets basically and the tighter and the nice substantial body Um, and I say that's why I actually like adding wool and stabbing it each time because I am doing that, making it smaller, making it smaller, adding a layer as I go. But because I'm adding a layer as I go, I just feel like I'm achieving something. 
but you know if you are happier just creating one big shape and going for it please do there's no there's no right way there's just this way and then you may have another way and that's good too okay once I've actually tacked this all down I'm going to see what size this is I have a feeling I might need to make him a bit smaller as in keep stabbing not to do anything with him like taking anything off it could be that we've got enough wool on I don't need to add any more looking forward to doing this project because I do love a hedgehog okay let's just neaten up that end again Sorry, bringing my head into the camera shot to remind myself. Keep everything centre. Right, now then, I just still need some felting, but let's see what size we've got here. So, if I cup my hands like in the picture and then say you know that's not bad and in terms of size that's eight yeah I do think it still needs to have um, a bit of felting down so let me do a concerted Dab around and then once I've done that decide whether we need to just add that one more layer because I'm just looking at our pictures because we're going to be adding adding our nose aren't we out here Yeah, okay. We do want to make sure he's a nice little rotund baby because he's a baby hedgehog. Baby anythings are cute and um, round, aren't they? Well, that's how we imagine them to be anyway. And why not? So what I'm doing here is I'm just pressing my fingers in and I can see a bit of build up of the so that I can then stab that in and visibly see it go in and down rather than what seems like sometimes to be just stabbing aimlessly and making no headway so yeah just keep stabbing away there and that's 
side. Oopsie daisy. There. there we go. There we go. Do that little squeeze and it just the the loose fibers pop up so that I can see them and then just stab them in. Do that again, squeeze, and then I've got some loose fibers popping up. Obviously going my slower when I'm going closer to my fingers. But try and keep it down the center there. Again, pop that up again, squeeze and pop those fibers up. Okay, it's filling tighter in that middle now. Still got those bits popping up there though. Okay. It's nice to keep moving it round so that you're doing it even all the way round. You can see that bit popping up already. Just making sure that this particular layer I'm substantially stabbing in and then I can make a decision about whether I need to add that final little piece. At the moment I'm thinking I will just to give him that plumpness because I think lengthwise he's okay. He, I've already called him a he. Could be a she, couldn't it? Not necessarily a he. I suppose you could put a little ribbon on it if you wanted to make it stylized in that way. I tend to leave my creatures more natural, but I know that lots of people love to give them extra character. There we go, just concentrating a little bit towards the end bit here. Still doing my pushing with my fingers so that I can see. You see how that pops there? I can see it's that bit, that side. Okay, and that. I think this is the part when you really do need to be patient because you just you keep thinking is it done yet and probably not <laughs> is the answer. There we go so that feels still got a bit of springiness which is nice and now I'm going to just stab down those end bits. One end is going to be the head where I add the nose and the other end will be the bottom which will have um, the mohair on it. Just 
just do my little squish again. Let's just make sure this other end, because I've got some soft, squishy bits there. Bearing in mind this is your core wool, and we're going to be adding details and colouring to the features. So, you know, core wool needs a good, strong core add all those bits on bit rounder these just a little bit miners anyway I don't know about yours but mine I think lengthwise is quite nice and I think I just need to add a little bit of in fact let me just take that in half you know, so whatever amount I have I always <laughs> cut bill I think I always want a bit left over because I'm always thinking I'm going to need another piece I'm sure I'm going to need another piece somewhere else yeah funny isn't it right tack that bit on before I now wrap this round just stretch it a bit because I want it to be that nice round the center there we go just give it a bit more bulk around the center so that he's a little bonnie baby. And then once I'm once I'm happy, I'll measure him and tell you exactly what my measurements are. Now, if you think that you've um, got something which is quite thick in a particular area and you just wanted to move it down, so let me see. So here I've got um, a ridge of wool that I just want to move down that way a bit. Now, you saw me, I did sort of scrape the wool slightly with my needles, but obviously I don't want to damage my needles. Now I was saying to you earlier about stabbing at an angle, which is fine as long as I go in and out at the same angle, okay? So if I actually wanted to move some of this wall down this way without actually scraping it, if I do this at an angle, what I'm actually doing is not only felting, but I'm actually pushing the wall in that direction. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So just stabbing down at an angle, I have just basically moved a bit of the wall in that direction. When I am just trying to solidify and felt and get the basic shape, more often than not, it's up and down. But every now and then I just think, oh, I could do with moving 
it in that direction and that's the way to do it but be very careful as we said at the start whatever angle you're going in with that needle make sure you're bringing it out because we don't want any broken needles number one you don't want the end to be lost in your piece and number two um, if you haven't got any spare ones you don't have to wait for another one to arrive I'm just once again going around this little belly this time because this is where I added my piece just to give him a little bit more. We may be using that final piece on it too. I just like to be short. going to do is just roll the egg number one you get a good feel for whether there's any lumps and bumps and it just evens out that okay so now let me have a little look at my shape yeah you know I'm still going to put that other piece down the middle because I want him to be a little bit a little bit tubbier, a little bit more baby-like. Let's not be stingy. Okay, once again, put that first bit on, tack it down. And once we've, um, once we've just got this bit in place, we will be ready to shape the little nose. Which, as I say, you need to think about, are you going to do yours exactly the same as on the kit? Or are you perhaps going to have yours with his little nose down to the ground, shuffling around? looking for some food up to you I'm gonna do mine the same as the kit but as I say I may just do another one in a different stance to show you at the end what it would look like could actually show you it at the beginning as well. Because I tend to shoot the um, the beginning intro after I've done the actual workshop. So if I have got a different version I can show it then as well can't I so that'll be just give you some ideas which will be nice you can see how those new bits are just nice and springy showing themselves so that I can just gently stab them in Hope 
hopefully my going through it um, to this extent with you will um, give you encouragement when you're thinking, goodness, this is taking a long time. You will know that that's actually normal. It does take time just to get this first stage. It's like anything though, isn't it? The foundations of buildings, of anything that you're making, you need to get that bit right so then that everything else you put on top of it has a good platform. There we go. You know, I just had a thought, if you were um, making a little girl um, with those extra spikes that you have left, you could actually put eyelashes on. Am I going too far? Tell me if I'm going too far. It was just a thought, it sprung into my head and I thought I'd share. Okay, let's have a look at that shape. Let's have a look at that shape. Yeah, that looks like the picture, doesn't it? Excellent. We will go on to picture number two. Okay. okay, so we are going to move on to step two, which is making the cone shape for the nose, for the little snout on our little hedgehog. So um, I have got the remaining third of core wool and the first thing I'm going to do as I seem to always do is split it in half so let's get that into the center let's pull that put half over there out of the way because we still have our four little feet um, as well as the snout to do um, and then it's always good to have a few little bits left over in case we need them for adding the legs and just tidying anything up anyway I always like to have a little bit of everything left over just in case okay so now let's pull this piece in half again and put that over there so we're going to make the nose so if we look at our um, our shape a little egg shape and if you look at picture number three, we can see that our nose is going to come up like that. That's if you're doing the little pert one like I am this time. We're just going to have a little cone shape added onto here. Okay, so we're going to make that cone shape. Um, and what we will do is we will stab quite a lot uh, around where the nose bit will actually be and leave it quite fluffy around so that we can actually join it. And then we'll use some of that um, wool I've taken off to actually shape that face part um, once we've actually got that nose on. Okay, let's pop that there. So let's start with this size and so let's pull that apart that way let's just take my needles and put them in my cushion right so in order to give us that cone shape what we're going to do in fact let me show you on here because it can probably be seen better than it can on the white Okay, so we're going to lay that out actually, obviously, on the mat. And then we're going to draw with our needle a little triangle shape. So we're going to stab, bump, bump. Then we're going to fold over, fold over, and start making a cone. Okay, so let's put that on there and do that. Now I'm going to use the two needles for this because I want to get a good strong line down. So how about if I show like that, in fact if I put um, my little cocktail stick, well it's rather a, rather a chunky cocktail stick isn't it, but anyway, if we put that on there that gives me a nice line 
to stab down, doesn't it? So let's stab down there. This is just the line that we're going to fold the wool in on. There we go. And then let's just do it down the other way. Okay, so we've just got faint little lines down there. So now I'm going to fold that over, yeah? And what I'm going to do is actually stab it up the top third there, because that's where we're going to get that nose really nicely developed. And then I'm going to pull the wall over this way. And once again, stab up in that cone. Okay, now let's just lift that off by pulling it out this way and just peeling it off. Mine's not very um, much stabbed into the mat, so that's good. If yours is, just pull it off nice and slowly. Right. So we need to develop this little cone area. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit more and I'm going to stab it onto that front cone area, the nose, the actual, you know, snout, nose, whichever you want to call it. Okay, and now I'm going to lift it again, turn it over and pull those bits over. Because what we're just trying to do here is get enough of a thickness, because we want to stab it quite hard. I mean, we will be adding um, a bit of colour and uh, the end of the nose. So, okay, now let's lift it up again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold that over, yeah? So that I fold it in half and then I'm stabbing it again. And now hopefully I've got every chance of getting it. And I think now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep turning it whilst I'm stabbing it. Keep turning it. if we keep turning it it won't then get stuck on the mat and also will hopefully happen very evenly sure I'm directing my stabbing exactly where I want it to go Let's do the old trusty roll in the hands. 
and take another look got quite a nice lot of um, fuzz out here that's good now I'm just going to take that end bit in a bit because we don't need it to be pointed pointed it's going to have a nice little rounded end okay okay so that's about let's put that in my hand as per the okay I think we might need to make it a little bit more substantial out here but let's look at it versus where he's going to go so okay if I put it that way up he will be going up like that and so we do need to get a bit more substantial in there okay so what I'm going to do is I because I've got quite a lot of loose bits off here so I'm just going to pull off that little bit And I'm going to add that to this top area. Just tack it on to start with and use my two. And once again, I'll do the whole rolling, turning around because it is a cone as opposed to a flat piece of felt. Okay. little splits together that whoops take it to the center of the screen again sorry about that there we go longer and then have another little look up against our little body shape because the next stage will be to add it to the body okay where are we fill in it a little bit denser in that let's do my normal little squeezing action down the center here because I don't need a point but I would like that to be a little although I'm going to be adding aren't I the little nose so don't need to worry too much okay so as I say I am going to have that pert little nose myself. Well, not myself, obviously, <laughs> but on um, on that little baby hedgehog. There we go. So let's look again. 
Yes, I think that is good enough to attach. And then um, we can play around with how it looks overall once he's attached. And then um, we can play around with how it looks overall once he's attached. Okay, so here's my little snout. Okay, that's what mine looks like. I mean, as I said, it's whatever shape style that you want it to be. But we've got the basic shape, we can add it on and then we can play around with how it looks and what we need to add. So here's my egg from earlier, which is the body. And this end was the slightly smaller end. So that's where I'm going to add my nose. I'm adding it with the um, snout towards the bottom so that it can then be, let me see if I can show this properly. So it's, this part is towards the bottom and then I can perk it up as it were. Okay, so let's get the most of the fuzz above and then put that in place like that. And then I've got this bit, which is going to be at the bottom. So I'm gonna start by tacking that bit on the bottom and then tacking around so let's take our single needle and just see if we can tack that on a little bit. It may be better to just give a slightly bigger stab with the two needles just to make sure it's in place. So now what I'm going to do is just pull him up slightly and tack that top bit there. But once again with the two needles it seems to be working better with the two needles today. But if the one works better for you, if you'd rather go slower and more deliberate, then you do that. Okay, I'm just tacking around this area, which will be the face part where the eyes go. There we go. Let's put you up a minute again. I'm just going to put my needle down the middle. Okay, so needle in, you see how it's in the middle and I'm just without bringing it all the way out and basically I've got my um, barbs which will be about down here so they will be joining the central bit in the center okay that's what I'm doing there okay now let's get around the outside again I'm not doing all this yet because I want to see I might want to bring some of it down once I've seen what the overall shape is. Looks a bit like an elephant at the moment, but that's fine. You will find that your pieces transform as you go through this making process. Okay, now I am going to bring this forward and around Okay, so it looks like a little shawl almost. Whoops. Okay, so I'm pushing it down, putting it around, and then stabbing that in there so that we have got more wool between the actual body and the, the snout. There we go, and then pull that round and just attach 
pushing that. It helps um, to produce the shape you want, plus attaching our snout nice and firmly. Giving it a good a good stab there. And then I've got the other side here that I'm bringing round and making sure. It's like a little shawl, isn't it? Okay. of my overall. Now I think that little nose is just a little bit too long which is fine because it means I can just squash it down a little bit and felt. Okay and then that'll be a nice little shape. me now this is where we're looking at the overall shape of our I'm just going to move that out of the way of our hedgehog um, not just the little snout we've just added and we are going to start adding a bit of extra bits if we need to because we've still got a very large piece over here to do our feet which is fine we just need to make sure that we've got the shape that we want before we add the feet and then obviously the spikes okay there we go We will be adding a bit more shape up here in a second. Okay. Okay. Tuck this bit in. On the bottom here. Make sure that's all in good. This is where I'm pleased I did such a lot of um, work on that original body because now I am just adding bits to make the shape that I wanted rather than still trying to achieve that infrastructure as it were. get here I need to get slightly bigger forehead yeah so what I'm going to do to achieve that is I'm going to take my little piece of fluff let me show you on here I am going to fold it over that way then I'm going to fold it over that way so I've got a little cushion see that got a little cushion pillow and then I'm going to put that over the top where I need to add the forehead okay and then I just 
snap that in place. Basically moving the wall to where I need the the more built up area. down the bottom and go to the other side tuck that in down the bottom and then I do I love all the different stages that they go through and how funny they look and then suddenly when you add the shading and the bits and pieces it's miraculous how you suddenly go oh there you go now it looks like a hair job Which is why it's always good to have your photos of um, hedgehogs or whatever it is you're making around. So you can always compare and think, yep, yeah, that's where I'm heading. It's fine. Still got my overall vision. <laughs> Which it's always good to have. Felted in. When I'm happy with my overall size and shape, I will just lay some wool over the top. Bring it all together as it were. Okay, there we go. So we need to make sure we bring that together so let me move that over there and pull off initially a smallish piece and just lay it across the whole front of that face and snout let's see if we can bring that all in together make that look a bit more less frankenstein and more organic let's say of hedgehog in a moment. Make sure you're going for the right proportions. This is where we need to get all those proportions and sizing and shaping right because we're going to then, once we've done this, we're going to be adding the eyes. And once the eyes are in, it's kind of set, isn't it? What about the rest of it and where everything goes from there. So I need to make sure I've got it right there we go that way oh, 
got it right for what I'm going for, put it that way. Now's the time to do that if I'm looking down there and I'm thinking I think perhaps just a little bit more around here I quite like my shape if you look at um, picture three I quite like that I've got my little snout there and how I'm gonna tidy that up um, but I think I just need a little bit more rotund around there and when I look here I think he's quite I'm just a little bit skinny and I just want to make him a little bit fat around there because my eyes once they go in yeah let's just make sure this isn't too elongated Right, so I am going to take this bigger piece, always in half. Um, I'm not going to put it on the bottom, I'm just going to go that way, do a comb over basically, yeah, a little bit of a comb over in the middle. Cute. Just give him a little bit more width, girth. As a little baby, with a healthy little baby hedgehog. Okay, just putting that together on the side. Okay. I mean, bearing in mind the um, fabric will be over this part, but I just want to give him something to fill out the fabric, really. I do love that spiky fabric. It's a brilliant effect. Dragging it back over to me again, not good. Okay.
give it that little bit of bulk in the centre there. So to fill out our fabric and it goes on top. Hmm, yeah, quite pleased with that. Okay, so I think he looks quite cute, doesn't he? So let's just make sure I have got the right shape for that. Getting those eyes in. So if you look at your picture of a hedgehog, you will notice that from the tip of the nose, if you go from the tip of the nose and then you go out to where the eyes are and then they go out to where the ears are, it's very much a V, yeah? So wherever you put your eyes, just remember your ears are going to continue on and be straight on from there so and the eyes do go in where it just starts to rise yeah sometimes it's a good idea to stick a little pin where you think they should go just to help you visualize, let's put a little pin there, little pin there, they'll obviously be bigger than that. Okay, so now that I've put that in, let me have a little look all the way around and look at that finished picture and think, yeah, okay, so you know, obviously I've still got to put my colorings and that around here and make that look nicer then he's got his eyes and then his little ears are there and he's got all his yeah and his little feet that looks like it could work but from that one's higher than that one so let's move that slightly Okay, see what oh, I mean about using pins, because if you look from the top, okay, that's all right. Yeah. We're going to put um, some dark color around it as well, so just to help emphasize the shapes. Okay, so anyway, that is the end of number three step three and now we are going to go on to the proper four because i've only just put little pins in there okay so here we are onto the eyes so step four so what we need to do is we've decided that this is where our eyes are going to be so what we need to do is to take the needle and just um, stab around the area that the eye is going to go so that basically when we add the eye it's going to go into the head rather than sitting out bold okay so let's just stab around that area just 
stab around that. Make that even bit there. Gives it a nice structure to also be put into. So let's see. Let's take my little pin out a minute. Now let's push my needle right in so that I create a hole. Pushed it right in, pull it out, push it in again. I almost said shake it all about then. <laughs> Right, let's pop our little eye in. Have a little look. Yes, there we go. Once again, have a look. Yeah, that's quite cute. So that will be there. Okay, let's put, step around there a little bit more. Put my needle all the way through again. There we go. Get my other little eye. Pull that out, give it a wriggle. Shake it all about. There we go. Okay. Now at this stage, I don't glue them in. I, I glue eyes in when I get to the very end of a project when I'm absolutely sure I haven't changed my mind because glue is one of those things that once glue gets on the wall you're not going to get it off so I'd much rather know that I've got to the end and very happy with the whole thing so at this moment in time let me check where those eyes are on the basis that I'm going to have the V which goes out and the little ears behind like that little ears behind yep little ears behind okay great so now we're going to start coloring up the nose so we're going to add the dark brown to the end then we'll do the little mouth then we'll add the light brown shading coming up to the eyes and around the eyes before we then add the um, the spikes. Okay, right, so let's start with the dark brown wall. And we're just going to take a little bit because we're just going to felt that little nose on the end. I'm going to roll mine up into a little ball Now that's probably quite a lot, but I'm going to, fact, let me stab it on here first and see how much that will be once I've stabbed it. Quite often it's easier to make your little shape and then add it rather than making the shape actually on your little creature. going to chop a bit off with my scissors because I did add just a little bit too much and then I'm going to add that to the end. Can we see? Now let me start by taking it down the centre.
Okay, and we're going to look at our picture here and what we're going for. So it is slightly on the top, isn't it, rather than the underneath. <coughs> our little tip of our nose. Stab that in at the top. Okay, yep. Just go over the top there. Yeah, I'm pleased I did that little shape and then I added it. Just gives me the less forming to do and more just attaching. Okay, on the side. And then on to the other side. Okay. I can always add more if I need to. fella isn't he at the moment a funny little fella indeed but very sweet okay there you go his little nose on the top Oop. So now we're going to look for the light brown wool and we're going to build up some colour around the snout and also around here and up to the eyes. Okay, I'm just, I'd add less to start with and uh, we will put the mouth on afterwards once we've actually got this little okay so that's i'm going to do it in this um what i call the v shape from the nose up to the eyes We will be adding some darker shading around the eyes as well to help emphasize those. But at the moment, let's get the light brown on. Again, this shading it's all up to you and what you want to put and wear have a look at your picture that you're going for and your particular hedgehog and decide where that shading goes I think like most animals they will be different on all of them so it all depends the look that you're going for. Okay, just tacking that on. Get that iron.
sometimes if you can't quite grab hold of the wall if you twiddle your needle around and grab some fibers and then stab that's sometimes just what you need on the top like that just grabs a few extra of the fibers takes them down and you stab in So I've got a fair amount on, then quite often what I end up doing is just putting a very light bit of white over the top just to tone it down a bit. It's all about shading and layers and if you've put something on and it doesn't look right, it's not the end of the world. You can just go over it lighten down the effect or darken it with something else take that single needle again to get some dark around those eyes and then we'll decide how much shading should lead up to it okay so let's get these sockets just by stabbing that dark brown around the eyes Dark the other side. Just stabbing the area around those eyes, it just brings it all in. Okay, now let's get a bit of the light and put that round it. further out there we go break through that so we can see the eye there we go makes that eye seem a little bit bigger gives a little bit of emphasis a bit of shading a little bit of character. There we go. It's quite sweet. And then on the other side, add to that light brown on the outside of the dark.
helps to graduate those colours a bit. to take a little more of that light brown down the center of that nose how they start to get character the moment you start putting that shading on After we've put the um, the spikes on the fabric, we will put some of this light brown around the edge um, to just tone that in to cover the join, as it were. So I'm not worried about going down here too much because I'll need to do some of that anyway. Also, I'm going to the way I'm going to cut my fabric is I quite like the idea of there being spikes coming just to this little front bit here so I'm gonna cut mine round there bearing in mind my little ears will be there so it will come round and round around there Okay, that's cute, isn't it? Right, let's get the little mouth on. And then we can get on and do his little feet. Okay, so to do his little mouth, we're just going to take a really thin piece of the dark brown. And once again, here it's all down to the expression that you want to give your little hedgehog. Now you can let's see if I can draw some lines for you. Now you can either just do a little mouth round like that. Can you see? You might want to just do a little mouth like that. Or in case of the one on the picture, there's um, he's got quite a little smile that you might want to give him. It's completely up to you. So you can see the one on the um, picture on your instructions where he's got quite a smile. So let me see if I can try a slightly different one where I'm going to take. Let me just take in the center there where I'm just underneath the nose I'm leaving a little bit of a gap between the nose and where I'm doing the mouth and I'm just tacking that in being careful to hold that because if I don't hold that 
when I tack it in the whole lot will disappear down the hole. We don't want that at the moment. Okay, now let's see. This might go to plan or it might not, and I might then pull it out and start again. So let's see if just by bringing it around here like that, like that. Yeah, I quite like that. Okay, I'm going to continue on. Right, so let's not chop that off just yet. Let's do you see where I, instead of giving him a little smile, I've just brought the mouth around here. So you can see how to do the smile by the picture. So here's just a slightly different version of it. There we go. There we go. Little face. Is that cute? That's cute to me. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So that's added the little mouth. So that has got us to the end of step six. There we go. That's cute, isn't it? So next. I believe we are going to make the paws, the little feet, how sweet is that? And as I say, we will return to the shading because once we've got the um, fabric on, we will no doubt suddenly decide we want to do some little changes, um, add some shading a bit more on there or not. It just, it will depend once that whole picture comes together, but I just like, to make sure I know where my eyes and ears and where I'm going to bring that fabric round. You see, we may even want to give him bigger eyebrows. I should do. Okay, so step eight. We are going to make the little legs and paws. So we have our large piece of um, core wall left over. So let's initially start by obviously pulling it in half because that's what I always do. Now, this shouldn't take that much wool to make these little paws. So what I'm going to do is pull that in half that way and then that in half that way. That in half that way. So we've got four equal pieces. Now, we want to make little sausages if you look at your picture 8a, so the little sausage where one end is fluffy and the other end is rounded because that's the actual paw, whereas the other end is going to be attached to the body. So I'm going to show you a little way to do that, but I like to do it. So I get a rather large cocktail stick or mini skewer. I mean, that's a cocktail stick, really. And that's slightly larger, only slightly. So you could use a cocktail stick. And this is what I do. I suppose I'll show you two ways because you might not have this. So with a cocktail stick and my piece of length, what I do is because I'm actually going to do it round and round and round and tight and tight. This once again makes it nice and tight and saves us doing masses of stabbing. Okay, so I am gonna initially concentrate on the end because that's where the pause is gonna be and then I'll bring it back a bit. So the first thing is I pop it over and I hold it with my finger. And then I don't, once again, in the same way as when you're um, pulling it apart, I'm doing the opposite this time. So when, if I was pulling it apart, I would go down here and pull it and it will come apart and I don't want that to happen. So if I pull it from here, it doesn't come apart because I've got hold of the strands. So I pass it over, then grab it at that very close and it doesn't pull apart, it's just nice and tight. Once again, over, nice and tight. Over, nice and tight. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to go around the end, come back, 
another one another one and then I'm going to do it slightly up and then back into the middle okay and so before I take that off I will just do a light tack stitch there we go and then I'm just going to pop it off as you can see it's not unwound or anything but what I want to do is to lightly stab just so I can feel right so it's tighter there 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 and then not so tight there so this is going to be the rounded foot so I'm just going to stab the end in a bit because that wasn't quite so tight because that was the end of the cocktail stick make it a nice little rounded there we go and then I'm going to roll it between my hands because that just makes it a little bit more sausage like okay and we will have a little pause there okay so let's just stab that up again a nice big podgy pause and I'm just going to stab it a little bit down here so it doesn't elongate any more than it is I'll just keep it in place lovely okay sausage number one so we just need to do three more of those okay so now we have our four little paws we're going to just add a little bit of detail to make it appear that they have little claws and a little bit of shading on the end of their of their feet so let's get number one so we're going to give them four little toes so that means we're going to give them three bits of dark that didn't help me doing it down there did it so you couldn't see it right okay let's um try that one again 
Now let's try number three. Well, we're not trying, we're doing, let's be honest. Okay, so let's just anchor that in the top again. Okay, just stabbing that into place. Number Neaten that up underneath a second. Okay. We are going to now just put some shading on this. I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to just tidy it up a little bit. Now let's just get a little bit of the shading. And pop that over the top. Just gives that a little bit of shading to the to the feet. We'll do the same to the others and then if we need to doubly emphasize any areas we can do. In fact I think for number two what I'm going to do is put the light shading on first and then put the, the claw feature over the top. I think that might work out better. And if so, I will then just add a little bit of extra dark over the one that I've already done. And that will make that good. There we go. Right, let's just get a little bit of dark.
once again off camera sorry about that a little bit of concentration going on here wasn't there rather than me thinking I should be showing you what I'm doing so let's chop that one come back over yes I think I like that much better with the um the shading underneath and then do the dark bit on top much better see what I mean by um, sometimes you make decisions they're the wrong decision it's not the end of the world okay Okay, and toe, well, not toe number three, but there we go. Let's put this crawl. Shading number three, I should say. Do that up a little bit. There we go. that paw versus that paw you decide whether you like black on second or black on first And then just finish the other two in exactly the same way. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we are step nine. So we have a little hedgehog body and we have a little legs and feet. And we are now going to add our little legs to the bottom of our hedgehog so really it's you this is where you need to decide how you're going to have your hedgehog sitting or standing um, exactly like the one on the box or you know because you could have it so that you had little legs so they were actually up 
if you look at little pictures quite often they sit on their back legs and push themselves up by their front or could have them just like the ones as I say on the on the front of the kit and I am going to do mine the same as that so what that will mean is let me turn my little hedgy upside down and decide which ones are going to be the front and the back let's have a little look here oh let's make sure you can see all of mine which way up am I going to have them that way up that way up decide which way I like them up that way up okay so I'm going to have those two together those two together and I'm going to have those two on the back those two on the front now I think what's going to happen is they're going to splay out like that and this is where I absolutely use what I call my little tacking stab so that I can have a look and see or you can try and pin like that let's see if that works first okay there we go so you can see can you see that where those little feet stick out I don't have a problem with that I think that's quite cute cute just sticking out of the back there sticking out of the back there bear in mind I'm going to have the um, his mohair fabric coming down to there too and also um, a little bit of the shading to smooth the transition from the fabric to the body of the hedgehog so that's fine and then for the front I'm going to have him underneath Ooh, look at his little back legs flailing out like that so I'm gonna decide how I'm gonna have those okay I'm gonna lightly tack mine on now so that I can get a good look so as I say little V shape at the back so that they're then sticking out at an angle which I think is quite cute let me get my single needle And take my pin out now really there we go I am just with my single needle just tacking those on so that I can get a look just to the sun down the side as well let me just tack down the side so that it's not moving around as much as it was <laughs> when I turned it over just now and looks a little bit like a, a ballerina okay so his little back legs are like that I think that one may need to go under a little bit more okay I think he might be flailing out just a bit too much let's just tack him down there again okay and then maybe pull them back slightly this is the great thing about tacking is I can still pull them about a bit pull them back a bit as I say because bearing in mind the fabric's going to cover all the bits there and I will do it properly with the double in a bit there we go so I quite quite like those little back legs like that Okay, and then at the front, I'm going to so his little ear is going to be there, his eyes here. So I think, yeah, playing around with him there, his little feet be there okay let's give that a go tack that one on let's 
so that he can come down a bit. Yeah. And then the other one over that side so that he's there. Okay, so a little go and that. Now you can look at the picture on your instructions and you can see that there we've got the two at the sides, the two out. Now I think on the instructions they've um, possibly moved them a little bit out that way. But you just need to look at your hedgehog and decide how you want him to look regardless of what I've done, regardless of what is on the instructions, everybody who will make one of these will make them slightly different and slightly different shapes. So where you put your feet may be slightly different as well, which is all good, all good, good, good. Variety is the spice of life, as they say. Okay, there we go. There we go. He's slightly looking to the um, left there, isn't he? You see that? He's slightly skewed off to the left. So, am I going to let him stay slightly skewed off to the left? Am I going to move his little nose? Am I going to move his little paws? Let's have a look. I could move him so that he's a bit more there you go. He looks a little bit more Yeah, there we go. So let me get my two and just stab that on a bit more permanently. And then I will add a little bit of white onto the top and stab that in just to give it a bit more substance. Let me just get a little bit, a little bit of my white core and just put that over there. So once again, stabbing a wool onto it is always going to be a bit more secure than just stabbing a piece in because it's almost like you've got another I call them like staples it's like we're helping to staple something on a bit more secure there we go my single needle a moment just to get that exactly where I want it. Okay. Always be a bit more accurate in my opinion with a single needle. bottom is still a nice little roundy shape. There we go. So there we go with his little paws. Let me just do that a tiny bit more there. There we 
go his little feet so you can still adjust them slightly move them around cute little fella okay once I've um, got the spiky fabric on we will tidy up any edges down here but I won't do that yet just because I'm not exactly sure where the fabric's going to come to um, what shading will be needed so we will no doubt we have got white left over that we can use to just tidy some little places up okay so we can move these little paws around still and decide how we want them okay there we go so we move on to the fabric so here's my spiky fabric as we looked at before so now is the time as i say to decide whether you want that laying down the back or whether you want that to be more spiky up the front and over this way so I personally want mine more spiky up over this way okay now you can see on the instructions um, that what you can do is just cut out a nice little um, well, it's not a circle, it's more of an oval, which fits the size of your hedgehog, which you, you would then basically go more or less from round there and sew it. And then you would cut a piece of fabric away at the back and then sew that down. So I think that's quite straightforward. You would turn that over you would work out the size of your hedgehog where your head's going to go and go round and attach i'm going to show you um, a slightly different way just because you've got those instructions which show you that way it's the same process but i'm just going to do a slightly different shape what i did was i actually took a piece of um, basic felt let me show you I took a piece of felt and I put it over and I decided that I actually wanted a slightly different shape okay so instead of just cutting out a circle putting it on sewing it and sewing up the back what I decided and I turned it into a paper pattern in the end what I decided I would quite like to try and I thought it'd be quite nice to show you now bear in mind I haven't practiced this so well, I'll be um, doing this live with you as it were now what I quite liked the idea of is having a bit of um, almost quiff of the um, spikes coming over there now so what I've done is I've shaped my pattern to go around there. Now I know that's actually going to be too long, but I quite like that so that when I put it down, I can decide how to actually cut that. Okay. Now what I've also done is when it comes to the back, rather than do a snip up the back and sew that together, I've decided I quite like to bring that down the back and have two snips at the side okay i just i think for me it might give a more rounded shape um i love the little shape of the hedgehog on the kit but i just thought you can see that you can see in the instructions exactly how to do that why don't i show you a slightly different way of doing it and then you can do either once it's cut out and we put it on and we sew it on it's exactly the same process. The only thing which is different is this shape. Okay, so we now do the same thing, but you might be doing yours in your circle. I'm going to do mine in this shape. I've decided that my spikes are going to go forward that way. Brilliant. So I've put the shape of my pattern with the forward bit there. Now, I need to get a pen. Got my 
a sharpie. All right, so I'm just going to draw around. If you're doing the circle as per the instructions, you will have just done a light circle around to the shape. I'm going to draw around mine on here and then I'll show you how to cut the fabric and hopefully not lose any of your spikes. Because you need a um, small pair or just a very sharp tipped pair of scissors to cut the fabric nice and lily. There you go. Looks like I'm going to make a kimono, doesn't it? Okay. Have a swig of my coffee. Okay, so small scissors, or if you've got larger scissors, they just need to have a very sharp end. Now I'm pretty sure that these ones don't have a very sharp tip. Let me just put that let me just put that onto the fabric and oh I don't know no that has done pretty sharp that's good okay I'm going to use these ones because otherwise I'd have to use these ones which are slightly curved which um is fine I could still work with that but straighter pair better right now how do we cut this fabric so that we don't snip any of our um little spikes away okay so what you need to do is you need to take your scissors and you slot them in very gently close to the fabric okay Let's see if I can get this across to you and very small snips so this is where I was saying you need sharp tip scissors because you are you're not um, bringing the scissors up wide you're keeping them down low and on the fabric so that you're not snipping hopefully any of the spikes you are just snipping the fabric because you're not lifting it up high enough to catch the spikes so very low very low if you've got a big pair of scissors as I say it's just about keeping that front edge of the scissors nice and low okay there we go there we go to my yours will either be a similar shape to mine or you might have gone a completely different shape with your own pattern or you'll be doing the circle as I say like the instructions but just snip away very small small and low small and low there we go and here into the corner there yeah nice and along the edge of the fabric and the last line and curve back to the beginning and so for a small piece like that this it doesn't matter that it's gonna take you a little while to do this obviously if you had lots of pairs lots of pieces to cut out for something like a teddy bear it would take a while but done right have we lost we lost a few a few maybe right now let's take you'll find that some of them I'll still gel together, but we'll just pull that off. And there we have it, I think. Pretty complete. <laughs>
Looks like a little aeroplane, doesn't it now? Or a kimono, as I said before. Okay, so now that we've cut out our fabric, we lay it on. Now, as you'll see, I've done mine so that it comes around his face. And I may, I'm going to leave that little front bit till last because I'm going to decide exactly um, how much I want that and I might snip a little bit of that off. So I'm actually going to start by doing the sides and the back here and then I'll finish off this bit last of all. I'll see, before I've even sewn it, doesn't that look cute? Oh, so sweet. Right. Okay, so, yeah, that's gonna go down there. Let's see how it fits down by the... Down by the feet. Yeah, okay. It's very sweet. Okay, so next stage, we need to thread our needle. Okay, now what I will do is I am actually gonna put a pin down the middle so that I don't move it whilst I'm sewing. Okay, check where I want that to go. Okay. And what I'm going to start by doing is just doing this little side down to there. And then I'll check to see if I've got my little cut right there. Let's check with you there. So we've still got to put his little ears on, let's remember. Move that slightly. Okay. Okay, we still have to put his little ears on. And the ears, as we know, are going to be in here. Above the eyes. Remember I'm saying about the triangle going from the nose out and then there so they're going to be just above there that's fine okay so if you've got your circle and you want to start you can start from this side and go all the way around to the back then stop then do the other side round then stop and then cut the slit down the back and chop out the bits extra decide how much to chop out and then you can sew the two separated pieces together okay so i'm going to do the same here but I'm not actually going to start right at the front because I want to come back and make that decision about how that looks once I've done this bit. So I'm going to start down here. And if you do the same with either your shape or the circle, start from the front and come round to the back and then you can decide how you want to arrange your extra um, piece that you're going to cut out. Okay, let's have a little look here.
Okay, I don't have to worry about it being identical in shape and everything here because as I say, I'm gonna stab some wall over the edge. So if I need to even out, make it symmetrical, I can do that then. just need to do the little flap now in your case you will have you'll come round and you will have a large bit of extra like that and so all you need to do is to pull that together decide where you want to snip the fabric up so that you've got your nice flat bottom take that off and then sew the edges up which is the equivalent of what i'm doing but i've just done two notches at the side and i'm going to sew those up but i may now be about to change how much i've got off here because i think i've got too much fabric here which is fine so i'm going to sew that little bit along the back there and then snip some more off Okay. As I say, you have potential to make your hedgehog exactly how you want him. Hopefully, with the instructions giving you one way, me showing you a slightly different way gives you the chance to either just follow the instructions or to go a little bit your own way. All depends how confident you feel or whether you have a very specific look in mind that you're going for. There we go. Right, let me just get that so that that is closer to that other edge. Just enough thread, excellent. Love it when a plan comes together. There we go. Snip that off, I will need to cut myself some more thread. So in your case you will have the back piece that you're snipping off. In my case I've got this these side bits where I'm actually going to snip a little bit up higher so that I can get the roundedness that I want. So if I can see that so the edges will join along here so I can cut a bit along there and just a bit up there. Let me get, I think I might need my, unless, no, nope, I think I'll be all right with that. Yep. Once again, doing the snipping down low so that I don't take off too many spikes, which at this stage is probably more important than when we did the original. Okay. So I want to just take an even more of a curve up there. There we go. And there. Lovely. 
lovely and that gives me that little join you see there yeah brilliant so I'm going to do my invisible stitch for that to join that together so let's have a look at this side be able to see that I'm going to invisible stitch them together let me have a little look at the front before I do that just chop off that little thread and okay so now we know how that is let's have a look at him here so love how it goes around the eyes and I can soften that with my white and brown walls but I want to not have that quite so I'm gonna make it more of a point I think Let's see if I do need these scissors these it's just a bit sharper I know they're curved ones which is why I didn't go to them straight away but Okay. All right, and then see what I mean about potential eyelashes. Hmm. Isn't it weird? You see things like that, and you think, "Oh, I think I might have to save those for another project." Okay, so let's let's cut around there. So we've got a bit more of a point. There we go. A bit more of a point. Oh, I like that. Yes. A bit more of a point there. Let me see. By the time I've got his ears on and done a little bit more shading around here, that will be great. Lovely. Okay. Let's take another piece of thread.
so I have finished sewing up the other side and he's now got a nice neat little bottom and he's looking quite cute so we are now ready for doing the ears so on your instructions we're looking at 14 a and b so we need to take some of the um, light brown I'm not sure if you can hear but we've got a thunderstorm outside let me just move those pins and things out of the way there we go right let me take my little needle and put that over there as well okay so we don't need very much we are going to make two ears let's have a look we are just going to have the little round shapes with some fluffiness on the end and my ears as I said it's like the little V shape out so my little ears are going to be going there if you look at your picture picture 14b you'll see it, little ears are there and there so that's where my little ears will be is there and there and then once we've done that we'll come back and finish um, doing any details around the eyes and adding the um, blending down here and around the edges so that we haven't got that big sharp edge and anything else any other kind of little characterful things we'd like to add but first of all we need to make our ears so let's start fairly small piece I'm going to break it in half let me put my <coughs> needle over there because I would quite like to make them alongside each other so that we can get them not identical but almost the same size basically so let's start we need a little round shape but to be honest that's too long <coughs> so that's in fact I have a lot less on that side than I do on that side let's at least use the same amount of wool shall we right let me start with this one so the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to stab with my needle a little um, arc at the top which is basically the top of our ear okay do that round and then I'm going to fold down and pull the wall down just because I don't want the ends of the wall to stick out I'd rather have the folded over edge and the edge of my ears so that's why I'm doing this and um, I'm pulling these bits down here and obviously leaving them nice and loose because they're the bits which will attach when we attach it to our little hog okay I'm aware that I'm probably making them a little bit big at the moment so I'm just going to squish that in a bit more once I'm happy with it, I'll put the other piece alongside so that I can make an almost identical piece. Now we also need to decide if we're going to put any um, accents of the dark brown or even the white in there inside the ear. Because it's always good to do it now. Let me lift that up. There we go. And turn it over and just stab from the other side. So that we have a fairly well stabbed piece. Yeah, not bad. Okay. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that between my, and I'm going to rub it smooth just to give me that nicer. I may well snip off the bits if I can't bring them in line as it were can't always bring everything in okay so let's do the same with this side keeping it through the curve 
Edge of Dark. Do the curve over the top. There we go. And then pull the fibre down. Form that top curve of the ear. This gives us a nice good shape to work with, doesn't it? Let's move that down. There we go. There we go. Let me turn him over. Okay, let's make sure he's not too big again, like the other one. Look at the little ears on a real hedgehog. Decide how you want to do yours. You can, you know, make them larger than life. You can make them dinky. All these little things help define the character of the little critter that you're making. It always amazes me how just, you know, if you move an ear a slightly different way or nose upturned, nose downturned, extra eyebrow you know or something it really changes the character of the piece so you know play with it if it's the first piece you've done you may well want to you know follow exactly um till you get your confidence but once you've got a bit confident or you know you want to make a second one play around with those ideas gonna smooth that between my palms get it thinner now I need really my business cards so that I can do the edge I'm looking around excuse me one moment business card put the little ear in there with the edge that I want to neaten up at the top, protecting your fingers. So, you can just stab in that edge, neaten that up, turn over the other way, stab in that edge. If you know you're not wholly successful in stabbing them all in, by all means, get your pair of scissors and snip off the little piece that you need. Okay, so how am I going to display my little ears? Decisions, decisions. Now I'm going to split those bits. Because I think what I'm going to do is then bring that together and then pump it down. Okay, right. Let's tidy up this other one. Put in the business card. Neaten up those edges. Dabbing lightly a little bit. There we go. I'm going to split those fluffy bits so it gives me a chance to play around with the ear, as it were. There 
again so I do that up a little bit more there we get Olivia okay and that little there okay so do I want to put a little bit of dark in the center I think so so let me just get a little bit of the, the dark wall, put that in the centre of the ear. Let me chop that off. Same here, centre of the ear. If there's too much, I will just chop it off again. This gives a bit of depth to the ear, this is all. Okay. And because you've, um, or I have, stabbed that through, you may well notice that you've got some black bits come through on the other side, which is fine, because it just gives it that little bit of tone. I'm just going to do my stabbing at an angle remember I said earlier if you're stabbing at an angle in and out at the same it's fine just don't move it when it's in the wall and let me just neaten up those little bits around that pull that yes and again same that's nice gives us that little black tone on the back nice little happy accident we do love a happy accident Make sure if I, any stragglers. There we go. Okay. Now let's have a little look. As I said, my ears are going to be going out at the old V. So that is going there. And you are coming out to basically about there. Okay, I am going to squish it so that it's like that. Let me just tack that. Okay, so then I've got my fluff either side that I can lay down, which is great. But it also means that when I pop it on and I can felt it down, I can actually make it smaller, taller, wider as I like, because I can then felt either side of these bits down into the head if I want to make it squatter, yeah, and smaller. I can make those decisions when it's in situ. Same with the other side, squish it together there we go a little bit folded together fluffy bits either side let's make sure that is tacked well in don't want it to come apart whilst I'm playing around okay so first one oh, looks like a little antenna doesn't it Look. <laughs> right let's grab the first ear now let's take off my pin and let's have a little go at where we want to put it so i think that he is going to his little ear is going to be about there now obviously that's big but i will make him smaller as I see fit once he's in place. So let me just tack him in place. I'm not going to touch all those fluffy ends yet. They will come into play once we are happy with where that little ear is. Now, let's tack behind as well. Okay. 
Now, I think here's, I'm going to have the ears forward, okay? I made that decision. I don't want them to be turned. I'm going to actually have them forward and I think I'm going to have them a little bit wider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's see if I can make sure you can see. Um, I'm going to stab either side down just to make him um, a little bit wider, but it will make the ear shorter. So I'm just stabbing it down either side of that original stabbing point. Then I'll just stab behind to bring it a little bit more upright. Okay. There we go, a little bit. Perhaps we'll do a little bit more. Still a little bit too prominent. do is just a little bit pointed at the top so excuse my fingers don't do as I do do as I say you should put your little business card in place to protect your fingers I'm just doing that oh yes I like that it was just a little bit too pointed and I just stabbed it down <clears throat> that little black there really helps to give me depth to those ears right so I've got these fluffy bits, which I could now use to just <coughs> provide the shading between the fabric and the face. Yeah. I can stab it down if I decide I want to put some extra white up there, I can do. But at the moment, I'm just going to use this as a bit of that shading. Now, I'm, I am stabbing it up to the fabric <coughs> and even a little bit on the fabric if I need to. There we go, just playing around with those ears again. It's definitely down. There we go. Yes, I think that's quite cute. That's quite a cute little ear, isn't it? Do you like that? That's my kind of thing. I'm just thinning out that. Yeah, beautiful. Love that. I may add in a bit more white there. I may feel that that's just a little bit too much colouring, but we'll come to that once we get to the overall finishing touches. So here's the other ear. Okay, so lovely, ears in place. We are now on step 15, the final step. So we blend the join between the hedgehog's body and its jacket by felting some of the light brown wool all the way around. Okay, so that's where we're gonna just add either the light brown or you might wanna even put a little bit of the um, white there if you want to. Um, I think I may have put slightly too much of the colouring around some of these areas, so could well be playing around 
with that. So let's have, first of all, let's make sure the edges um, of the fabric have got a nice little layer of something around them. Just to blend in rather than having that short stop between fabric and the body. There absolutely is no hard and fast rule to this. If you're happy with what yours looks like and you don't want to add these bits, don't. I've actually put my um, fabric quite low on the body. Because I, it was the way I decided mine was going to be. So I don't have that much. I'm just really putting a really thin little fluffy layer around. I will put a bit of the, the light brown at the back. Quite sure that little hedgehogs have tails, you know. But um, so if you want to add one, go ahead. We won't add one today, but it's a thought, isn't it, for the next time? One of those little details you could add if you wanted to. Right, it's just a. There we go. Just a little bit of blending. And then we'll come around to the important face. To make sure we've got all the details that we want. Okay. Oh, bend those ears up. Okay. Lovely. So cute. So very, very cute. Right, so what I want to do is I want to give my little one a little bit more of white.
need to stop, don't I? I will stop. Even though one side is darker than the other, so it's alright, I'm just going to do another little bit. I cannot decide, can I, about how much white I'm going to put on this side. I think it's sometimes I think it's best to finish and look at it the next day. And then sometimes you go, oh yeah, I know what I'm going to do with that. Right, now underneath I will just put one last little layer of the core just to give it a fluffy combined bottom. There we go. I know that after turning him upside down like this, I'll have to sort his ears out again because I always seem to crush his ears. Don't I want to turn him upside down? There we go. Okay, so if we're very fuzzy, we can do little snips, little haircut, haircut 100, as it were. There we go, our cute little hedgehog. Sue, so thanks for joining me on this workshop. So here's my finished hedgehog, and I'd really love to see pictures of yours too. So feel free to add them to this um, YouTube below um, in my channel, Tutique, or as before, go along to the Facebook group, Tutique's Tips and Tutorials, and add them there, and that would be great. Of course, even if you've got to this point and you've still got questions, something that I didn't perhaps explain, please add them as well and I'll come back to you as soon as possible. Hopefully you can join me again soon in one of the future videos.